Hello everyone and welcome to the Aerial Explosion tutorial, made with only slightly modified Unity assets. To start, I want you to import the package with the five materials, which would be these ones here. Explosion 1, Ring, Smoke, Smoke 4 and Spark. These are all basic Unity assets that I have, one of them I slightly modified just to suit. At the end of this tutorial you'll be making a really cool explosion, like this. Or you can, you know, vamp it up a bit and make three. Alright, so let's get started. Alrighty, to get started, go to Game Object Particle System. First things first, change the shape to a sphere because it's an aerial explosion, it's not on the ground or anything. Change the radius to zero. Alright. Now, what we might want to do, these particles are moving a bit slow for an explosion, so you might whack that up to like 200. And they last way too long, so let's make that lifetime of two. And. With explosions, generally with the smoke, you've got the initial force, and then afterwards it slows down a bit once to get to once it gets to the outside of the explosion. So you want to limit the velocity of a lifetime. Best part about this, you can put it on a curve. So what you do is make a second node, whack it to about, say about here, and you put your max speed at the start here, so it doesn't actually go at like 20, like you can see here. Put it 200, which is your max speed. And there you go. It stops when it gets to the outside keeps tapering down and slows down to there. Alright. Next thing you want to do is probably flesh it out a bit. Probably make those a bit bigger as well. Start size probably about... Let's try 5. Oh, that's 55. No. 10? Yeah, we'll just do that for now. Alrighty. Um, then what we'll do is... Hang on a second here. 50 time, left time 2. Alrighty. What we want to do is actually vary the start speed a bit. Whack it on a random teen two constants. All right, make it like 50, which would be pretty good. By doing this, you're actually making it so some stop halfway in between, so it fills it out a bit more. What we'll do is also change this to our correct particle of explosion one. All right, boom, there we go. Another thing to do with this sort of stuff is you really want to make sure that you add a bit of randomization into it, so it's not actually, you know, the same every single time. So what I want you to do is just change the rotation of everything here to minus 180, 180, just so it starts on a random axis and rotates its way around. All right, now we want to fiddle around with the emission rate. <clears throat> People are probably going, yeah, add it just burst particles, and then that'll be awesome. No, no, you don't want to do that because that'll release every single particle you have at exactly the same time. You don't want that. What you want to do is randomize it a bit. So we only want maybe a hundred particles there max, but then we want to do it at quite a fast rate. So it almost comes out at once, but not quite. You can sort of see it as it coming out at separate times, but not quite. So that's a bit more explosion-like. Boom. Okay, another thing you might want to do is with this speed over lifetime is actually taper off a little bit so it keeps going out very slowly. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, now what you want to do now is probably make this get bigger over time, because, I mean, smoke gets bigger and smaller as wind passes through it and everything. So what we'll do is go to size over lifetime. Alright, with this here, I've actually got this predefined curve, if you guys want to just look at the points here. I put it about 1 and then curve it up to about 0.8 up to the very top with the, with the size of 3 and then reduce it back down a bit. Now another thing to do, it's still a bit too small, so I'll probably make the start size a bit bigger. So make it 20. There we go. That's nice and filled out. That looks very good. <clears throat> Next thing you want to do is, this is the best part actually, which makes most of the explosion, and that's playing around with the color over lifetime. With this here, with smoke and stuff like that, when you make an explosion, it has a big bright white yellowy red flash, and then at the end it dissipates to a dark smoke actually made a gradient already here, just to show you guys quickly, instead of feeling around with colors for a while, just to show you what it looks like, just here, just the, the core of the explosion which you're going to be using. Have a look at the variables if you want here, just the general look, you can make it darker and more red if you like, and just fiddle around with that a bit, but I like it here, it's nice and bright and sort of poppy. And then what you want to do is actually change the gradient a lot earlier, earlier straight to a grey because you don't have 
this aerial explosion is a big fiery explosion all the time. It has its initial boom impact burst and then after that the fire dissipates quite quickly and just turns straight, in, straight into smoke. So that's why I've just got it as a grey here about you know, less than half way through the, the full particle animation. Okay, what, you, what you want to make sure you do also with the gradient here is make sure you actually change the alpha to zero otherwise when you get to the end of the explosion it just disappears instantly and smoke just doesn't do that. It just doesn't. So what you want to do is add the alpha to zero. So over lifetime it just gets it dissipates and slowly fades out. Alrighty, make sure you save. Now onto the next part. What you want to do is create another particle system within this one here. This next particle system here is actually going to be the debris. This is the large chunks that are getting blown out of the explosion, which eventually will make the tendrils of smoke come out of it as well because it's pushing the smoke with it. What you want to do here is make sure it's not looping and what you want to do is actually change this from a billboarded texture that you normally use for uh, particles to a mesh. You want to give it a bit of volume and a bit of texture to it. Um, just for the sake of this tutorial you could have your own custom mesh in here like a rock or a piece of metal or something like that but for now I'll just use a capsule. It looks pretty good. And for that default particle we'll use something like a... what will I use for that? I'll just use... I'll use a smoke one here. Might use just smoke in general. Let's see if we can see that. Ooh, no, we can't. Oh, there we go. There we go. It lasts only five seconds. Now, what we want to do with this is make it burst out with the explosion. So, same as the explosion beforehand, make sure you got it as a sphere. That is very important. Boom. Okay. Now, because it is a burst explosion, you got this initial explosion, which is the very most important part, which is the core. The debris comes out slightly later, so what you want to do is actually give it a slight delay. Next you want to do is the emission. With the emission here, you don't want that much. I'd probably say 20 would be your maximum, and you might just want to use it, use it as a burst. Boom, so it pops out. Another big thing here is its speed it needs to be very high. It needs to be with or more than the explosion actually is. So it actually bursts out and it looks good. As you can see here, the size is way too small. You can barely see it. It's tiny. What you want to change that size to is probably something like 3. There you go. Got some good debris blowing out of that now. The next step with that is, like the smoke beforehand, it's, the debris is going to be spinning around everywhere. You want to have that at random random rotation. 180, 180 is generally standard when you're rotating particle effects around just because what other direction can it really go? If you say 360, it's just going to start at 0 or 360, really. So what you want to do as well is give it a bit of rotation over lifetime. This one here I don't like to do too much, but I would like to actually make this rotate 360 degrees in one direction or the other in between it at some point just for this stuff flying out. So these rotating really slowly. Um, also reduce the lifetime so it actually spins a little bit more of a lifetime. Probably change that a bit more to 720. That's better, it's actually spinning out of control everywhere. Excellent. Another thing, that debris is grey. It doesn't probably not going to be grey, let's make that black. That's not going to work because yes it is, because it is going to work and no one can tell you different. Okie dokie. Next thing here, debris. Things fall. We have this little thing on Earth called gravity. Because it's such a strong explosion, you've got this stuff moving at 150, which is, in unity, I have no idea what unit it is, but it's very fast. So we increase that to probably about 50, so it explodes out and drops nicely with a, with an, with a decent curve. The next step you probably want to do is make it a little bit brighter is vary the size. I mean having the exact same size debris pop out in all directions is it's okay but you want it a little bit different. So I'll probably change the size between two constants probably maybe one even smaller 0.5. This just looks a bit more varied and whatnot. That looks a lot better already. Okay next part is making the tendrils of smoke that blow out with the debris here. Okie dokie. To do this one here we're going to be using sub emitters. This is such a great tool. You can make fireworks and everything with it really easy. It's made everything so much more simple when they brought this in. What you want to do is make a birth one because when you add it on birth it actually trails where the particle effect goes as if you made 
something in local space and you're moving it around if you want to move around with physics or something like that you can with script or just you know putting adding a rigid body making gravity applied to it but in this makes it track a particle which is just excellent what you're going to do is probably start with is edit the sub emitter and increase the rate at which it emits particles so it comes out a little bit more dense I'll say that's pretty good because it's going to be smoke and we're going to actually make these a lot bigger this is really small to start with probably make the start spore, the start size of about one start size 20 whoa that's really big and we need to change that particle too we will change that one there to smoke from re smoke texture this one here <laughs> as you can tell this is not have random rotation or anything like that and it's just looks like solitaire actually alrighty so what we're gonna do like the other smoke and everything want to add a random rotation 180 180 and straight away that looks better. It looks a lot more random, a lot more like just normal smoke. Another thing you want to do with this explosion here with these, this smoke here is make sure you've got the right one on. Smoke. Yep. Okay. As you can see, when it's following the particle that's actually within there, you can't see it. Um, you want to make sure that it starts off small then gets bigger. What you want to do is actually use start lifetime, ah, uh, sorry, start size to um, work with this. So you want to start it with a curve. But making the start curve 20, it's going to be bigger when the emission first starts and then smaller when it gets towards the end of its emission life. So you want to move this down to about, yeah, let's just try that for a second and see how that goes. See how it gets smaller as it keeps going? But it's still really big and it follows the debris all the way till it dies all the way down the bottom. So to fix that, probably want to, oh, hang on a second, a little bit of a bug here. Got that lasting way too long. Okay. There we go. That's better. Now, what you want to do is make that size 20. Cool. Now, to actually change that, you can just ramp this up over to here. So that keeps going and the debris eventually just dissipates off from the smoke and it keeps going. With that, that still looks really way too uniform and blocky to be smoke. So what you want to do is actually give that a bit of speed. What you want to do with the start speed is give it maybe, let's see 5, see how that looks. See how it smokes around and whatnot. Let's give that 10 maybe. That's a bit better. It's a bit fluffier. Alrighty. Now what you want to do with that is, because it's that's really dense compared to the original smoke, so what you want to do is uh, make this color of lifetime really really low you want to reduce the alpha on this to maybe a bit less than half and then as the other smoke when it gets to the end it reduces to zero so if we do that it's a little bit better what we might do even is change this color here to a bit of a darker color because changing that there this uses alpha blend that makes it a bit darker yep probably a bit darker again make sure that's nice and dark there. Okay. That's not too bad there. Now, you can see right here, you can see the smoke coming out from the middle when the explosion's still going. This is a big issue. This here, sorting fudge, most people just look over it. The higher this number is, the lower in layers the particles are going to be. So if you put this to like 50,000 for example. You see how it disappeared? There we go. So when we explode like that, this actually comes out of the explosion rather than overlapping it because it's it comes out after the other one. It's not made from youngest to oldest or anything like that, which you can change here if you like, but it's better using the sorting fudge here so you actually do it with particles so you can make that a ridiculous number and it'll always be underneath of everything else. So that looks pretty good so far. Alrighty, another thing you want to do with this smoke here is probably vary its size over lifetime as well, just like we did with the original explosion too. So the start speed of this here, oh sorry, not start speed, start size. Uh, where are we at? Size over lifetime, here we go. 
start size, probably reduce this down to something like 0.5 and then bring that up to 1.5. Let's see how that looks. Because smoke does get bigger as it dissipates over time. That doesn't look too bad. To make this a little bit better, I mean, if you want... There's always, it's always going to look better with a lot more particles. So if you put this up to like 200 or something, sorry, not 2,200, just a 200, you have a lot more particles in there and it looks a lot fuller and everything, but it's just going to wreck your, um, your processing power of your game and it's just going to slow it down and frame rate's going to come busting out and you don't want that. So you still want this quite low, only at 50. I mean, that's still quite high, but for a high detailed particle effect like this, it's not too bad. Alrighty. Another thing with this explosion is the debris and smoke start from the center. You're not going to be getting smoke from the center of the explosion. You're going to be getting it from the outside. So what you want to do here is actually make this emit from a shell. If you emit this here from the shell... Oh, whoops, wrong thing. <laughs> you don't want to move that at all because this is the sub-emitter. You want the actual the thing it's emitting off the debris that it's getting that's getting blown off to be emitted from there. So if you go to this one here, I might just name these, make them a little bit easier. Debris, make that to smoke. Okay, so you want to edit the debris up here. What you want to do is change the shape. Here we go. Make this sphere a lot larger. That's still a bit too small. You can see it's coming right out from the center. It doesn't look that good. So what you want to do is keep extending it, probably to about, let's say about 15 maybe. That's not half bad, it's starting from about just the outside of it almost, halfway through the explosion there. That looks pretty good. Okay, now that you've done that with the smoke here, You want to increase that, maybe. What's going on with that? Speed, debris. Ah, there we go. Ah, the smoke doesn't actually have a shape. It needs to have a shape for it to do anything and emit everywhere. Okay, there we go. That's better. Now I've got to just reduce that speed back down to 10. Okay. Just a quick recap there, just because of that mistake. Make sure you have your shape on. If you turn it off, it doesn't actually emit anywhere, it just stays in a zero point, stays exactly the same spot, doesn't get affected by speed or anything like that, it just keeps going. Alright. For the next part, this explosion is almost done, which is good, is with explosion, you got the little, you got the big debris here that brings smoke with it and stuff, and then you got the initial explosion sparks and burst with it. So what you want to do in this particle system here, I'll just name this one explosion. Tutorial. Okay. You want to make another particle system. This one here, once again, is going to be another burst. So you want to make this one here zero and burst of maybe I don't know, 200 maybe. It's quite a bit. Make sure you change the shape to a sphere as well. Because this is going to be the with the core of the explosion from the very beginning. This is going to move extremely fast. So I'd probably make this random as well, just so it fills it out a bit. It's not going to look weird. So as you can see, it's all bursting at the same speed here, which is oh, not anymore because I just changed it. Make this 500 and 100. Boom. Nice big explosion of debris everywhere. But now with that obviously lasting way too long, you want to change that to maybe... 0.1 of a second because it is so fast. Maybe even more. Maybe randomize that even. Random between two constant. Make that 0.3. Yeah, that's better. Another thing is with sparks and stuff like that coming out of things, they're not just little dots and whatnot, so we've got to change the texture. Obviously, with this, you're going to be using your spark. Boom. But one thing to remember with this spark is it's facing one direction because it's billboarded and it just looks a bit derpy. So what you want to do with that is change it to a stretch billboard so it actually stretches in the direction that it's going. So that's a little bit better. Probably increase that a bit more to about four. Bang. 
Yeah, that's better. Now they're really small. Whoops, they're really, really small. So I'll probably increase those sizes and randomize that too, even. Random size between one and three. Three is probably a bit too big. 0.5, two. They're probably uh, a little bit too big there. Yep, there we go. Okay, they probably last a little bit too long. Oh, that needs to be 0.1 to start lifetime, and 0.2 even, just because they're moving so fast. Change that size to 1, that's a bit better. Make it back to 2. It's only a little bit extra effect to it, but it really adds up in the end when you're making a particle effect that you actually have these extra things in there. Um, with this, you can change... You might want to even add like a another color in there or something like that. Random between two colors, make this pink or purple or red or something like that when you do it, which isn't going to make much difference with this because it's a colored texture. But if you have your own custom one that's just a normal additive white particle, you can change the colors of it freely. Okay, last thing to do for an explosion like this is to make the explosion ring. This is like the concussive wave that gets shot out of an explosion afterwards um, when the explosion is you know, going through its explosive wave. So what you want to do is add another particle system. First name this one here to sparks, this one here to rings. Now with rings here, this is going to be different from the rest of what we've done. We need to make this a sphere, make sure that is zeroed out, that is very important that it is zeroed out, otherwise it's going to look weird. Um, what you also want to do is, this needs to be not burst, because you want this wave to be somewhat continuous and give it a bit of volume. So what you want is you want a maximum of three particles, and you want to ramp this up so it happens really fast. Another thing you want to do is you do not want speed on this because what we're doing is actually we're going to be changing the size of one particle texture so it just increases to create this wave. Um, we'll be doing that with the rings. This one here I actually modified because this um, this here wasn't a additive. This one here was alpha or something like that. I needed to be additive because I needed to be a little bit see-through and everything. Okay. Now, with that, we want to increase our size over lifetime. This here, simple, started at zero, and it gets bigger. And you just keep making this bigger until you see it, which is not actually seeing it at all. Probably because the start size is way too low. Okay, now we're seeing it here. Now, the issue we're having here is it lasts way too long. Because, you know, if it lasts five seconds and it takes five seconds to get to its max size, it's not it's not realistic at all. So what we're going to do with that one here is give it 0.3. And, whoa, that is huge. Okay. Another thing Unity does, as you can see, is have a max particle size that you can have on screen. You can fix this by changing max particle size underneath the rendering tab. You can make this, like, 200. So it's max size all the time, which is very handy. While it's that big, it'd probably be easier to show you that instead of having billboard, you want this to be horizontal because you want the concussive wave to go out from the center and just radiate outwards. Like that. Exactly like that, except we don't want it to be looping and we want it to last 0.3 seconds. Maybe a little bit more? 0.4? No, we don't. 0.3. Maybe make this about 10. Nope. Okay, what we'll do, you know what, we'll just make this burst particle. Might be a bit easier. Yep. Okay, now that concussive wave is way too big. It's far too big. So what we'll do is change the size to about start size. That's 8. This is 48. Why don't we make that 50? Make that nice and big because it starts at 0. And we'll change this to something like 7. Yeah, okay. Cool. Perfect. Boom. Okay. Another thing you're noticing is that this here, when it gets to its end of life, it just disappears. We don't want that. To fix that, just go trust the old color of lifetime. 
go up here. The last, for the end of it, you just want to change the alpha to nothing. It's as simple as that. Boom. Because of that, you can see it dissipates over lifetime like that. Okay, one more thing. Under the explosion, get rid of looping. Okay, make sure none of this is looping. Oh, this is looping. Don't want that. And you don't want that. All right. Boom. There you have it. You have an explosion. Okay, almost finished. We've got one more thing to do. As you can see here, the smoke is is dying in an orderly fashion, which does not make any sense whatsoever. To make it die so it goes all the pretty much exactly the same time as it, you know, you see in the sky when one wind comes along, wind come along, blows blows the smoke away in one big gust, not from one end to the other. It just looks weird. So when you get your smoke here, it's your start lifetime. Because it's uh, it starts over here and blows out and it's actually emissioning um, from a different particle, the start lifetime of each particle from the start to finish is different. So if you change this to a curve, you just want to make this go down like that, and hopefully that'll fix the problem. Not quite. Oh, there we go. Because make that the same as the start size. Because when it gets to zero, it'll be it's nothing. So it all disappears at the same time. All right, and color of lifetime because it doesn't die. It dies sooner than the actual timer itself. You might want to move the alpha over as well just to make sure it dissipates properly. That's almost correct. Might actually just increase the lifetime of these to two. And then the start size and... Okay, start size two, that's good. Um, might actually make that a little bit higher even. Just change this back, maybe to three even. Yeah, there we go. That dissipates almost at exactly the same time. Excellent. Okay, well there you have it. You have your very own explosion made with very basic Unity materials here and the slightly modified, very, very slightly. And I think it turned out very good. Um, this particular explosion here with custom custom textures and everything that I made actually uh, is in my package that I got. It'll be in a link below if you want to check it out. There's a demo scene and everything. Um, yeah, don't forget to subscribe because I think I might be making quite a few more tutorials of uh, how to make certain particle effects and how to do it on the on the hobo <laughs> when you don't really want to go making your own particles and um, your own textures and stuff just using this normal Unity stuff because it's not too bad. Alrighty, thank you for watching.